In 2004, Jack O'Donnell acquires Akai Professional. He also owns Newmark, and he also owns Alesis. And he's put out two MPCs so far, the MPC 2500 and the MPC 500. But there's still problems, because Roland and its MV8000 is still selling. And it can read MPC files like sequences and samples in the first version of the MV8000. Then in 2007, Roland comes out with the MV8800 in October NAMM show. The battle for the hip hop home market is getting thick now, and it's kind of a war. And one more person's coming. There's a guy that made a software. A software is called GRVBX. It becomes machine in two more years, which is going to be tough, but not tougher than this. The housing market collapses. Recession starts, and now you got to wait to see what happens. But you know something? Akai just keeps doing it. Another MPC comes out. This one is called the MPC 5000. Hello, my name is Mike Hosker. I'm a product specialist with Akai Professional. I'm proud to be showing you today Akai's MPC 5000, the newest addition to the MPC line. So first thing you're going to notice is this much larger screen here with inverted color and high contrast. This will ease the strain on your eyes during extended sessions. And over to the left of the screen we have eight more Q-Links controllers than that of a 2500. So most of the parameters and, and modes that you'll go into are all adjustable using the Q-Links. So for example, if I go into my effects mode, which we have 49 of now, and we have four buses that we can put two effects on each bus, I can go into my effect, choose it, and now the Q-Links automatically correspond with the parameters that I'm adjusting on the screen. In program mode, we have the ability to put four samples to a pad, which we've already been able to do before in, in previous NPCs, but now we can cycle through these samples on one pad. We go into window, and in zone play we can choose cycle, and cycle through the samples on one pad. So you can play a beat with one pad. We can also randomize the play of those samples as well. Also in program mode, we have our filter LFO page, which allows us to adjust the filter and LFO, the shape of the wave, the shape of the LFO, pitch, level, pan, and everything related to that voice. We've brought back Simult mode, which allows us to trigger four pads with one pad. So I have these three pads here set to simult mode, and this pad is going to trigger all three of those. So pad 14 has that sound, 15 and 16 is my synth line, and with pad 13 I'm going to trigger all three of them. Put a beat over it. Also, we've incorporated hard disk recording streaming from the hard drive. So now you no longer have to dump your work into a DAW. You can record eight tracks of audio hard disk recording directly to the MPC itself. And don't worry about the size of these recordings either. We've incorporated an 80 gig hard drive with the unit. On top of all that, we've incorporated a 22 voice virtual analog three oscillator synthesizer. All the parameters in the synthesizer correspond to the cueling controls. And we get into each one of our pages for editing these parameters by using the F buttons below the screen. So my oscillators, filters, envelopes, LFOs, and there's a master page for editing your global synth parameters using the cueling controls. So I'll go ahead and bring up a synth. And now I'll do some editing. There's also an arpeggiator that allows us to latch. And now I can So now I can latch an arpeggiation and apply all my parameter changes while that arp is playing. I can sequence multiple synthesizers. It's a 22 voice virtual analog synth, so it's a real monster of a synthesizer. In mixer mode, we now have a track mixer, which allows us to adjust all our levels, muting, and panning of, of the tracks now, not just the individual pads. And of course, 
I can record all my mix changes as well. So now I can mix entire groups of pads and not have to worry about doing them individually or knowing what's on each individual pad. In our trim mode, we've upgraded our file format Chop Shop to 2.0, which allows for stereo beat matched files. We can now also extract, convert from stereo to mono. We can normalize, reverse, time stretch, pitch shift our samples like never before in an MPC. We have an 8 DAT light pipe port with 8 audio outs, 12 Q Link controls, a larger screen with inverted color and high contrast, expanded effects and effects busing, master EQ and compressor, and four buses to put two effects on each one, so you can have up to eight effects going at once. And there it is from the horse's mouth. That is the guy who's the product specialist at Akai Professional. And this is the MPC-5000. Don't you love it? Well, this is back in 2008. And what they're missing here is the idea of why Roland became popular. Because it's a studio in a box. Here they have a product specialist that's explaining to you how it works. This guy is not a professional. He doesn't make music for a living. He works for them. He doesn't come in and record vocals in a bunch of tracks. Now he did say there are eight tracks in there to record on. Well, you need to be recording on those tracks. Put some vocals down, a bass line, bring a guitar player in, demonstrate the item. That's the problem here, actually. And also, it doesn't work that good. They need to update the software. So as you probably know by now, if you've seen the thumbnail for this video, Just Blaze dissed it. He dissed it in several publications. And after he dissed it, the production of this machine got stymied. People were not trying to buy it. It's a recession now. They want to make sure they buy something they can work at home, not spend more money, build their tracks up, and have the hope of making a good product. And then, in 2009, they got a fix. They come to the NAMM show. Matter of fact, let me shut up. Listen to what they did in 2009 at the NAMM. We're actually featuring the new OS 2.0 release for the MPC 5000. The important thing to know is this OS comes directly from our users, from forums, from emails that we've received. This is an awesome free download at akaipro.com. You can download it, load it into a compact flash card, and upload and upgrade your MPC 5000. Some of the big features really fast. There's now key mapping available. You can create up to 128 key groups on this for any piano sounds or any really vast sounds that you want to map out. You've got bus effects controls with your Q-Link as well as uh, actually uh, recording the automation effects with all your Q-Link effects on those. You've got quantization on your track mutes. You've also got keyboard shortcuts built into it. If I'm on track one, I can hold down shift and hit pad one or pad 10, I'm sorry, and jump to track 10. If I'm in my hard disk and I'm looking around, I've got a large list of samples to select from, I can hold down shift and down to jump to the bottom, shift up to jump to the top, or shift left to jump back to the actual root directory of the hard drive. And there you have it. They added some software updates, they talked to customers, they did online forums, they tried to fix the problem they had. Now they lost about a year on this because sales are pretty bad for a year, but they picked up later on. But at the same NAMM show in 2009, that software I mentioned before in the beginning, the GRVBX became machine for native instruments. And guess what? Well, you probably already know. It's a hit everywhere because it uses the computer for everything. So let's look at the MPC 5000. It sells for under a thousand used now. You can get it everywhere, but I think a lot of guys just love it and keep it. So there is a market for it used and you could probably find it, but it does work. And it's not bad when you have eight ads with a light pipe out. Let's look at the buttons on here, the back, and then check out the front. In 2008, Akai released the MPC 5000. Sells about 800 bucks now. You get four Q-Link faders, eight Q-Link knobs, and 12 Q-Link buttons. 
Now, below here, we have the erase and the note repeat buttons. Right below our faders. Now, above our cooling section, we have our new synthesizer, which is a virtual synthesizer with three oscillators. Next, we have our monitor. It's much bigger than before, and it goes straight up. So you can sit right down and watch the monitor. Also, we have our pad bank with a bunch of pads. And you can see there with F-stop buttons, which match where the place is on the monitor. Next, we have here our record in, our main volume, our input through. Below that, we have our pad bank, A, B, C, and D. Now, under here, we have our full level, 16 level, track mute, and next sequence. We also get our data entry pads right there, and we have plus minus and enter right there. Also, tap tempo on the bottom. Now, to the right of that, we have our data wheel, plus or minus buttons, and our cursors, up, down, left, right. Now, under this section, we have our main, we have the mode button, shift, and undo. Next, we have our locate section. I can locate either by step or by bar and set my locate point. And of course, we have our transport section for playing back, record, overdub, stop, play, and play start. Now, in the back of our MPC 5000, we have record in, right and left. We can use micro line for our inputs. Next to that, we have our phono in for turntables, left and right, phono and line, and there's also a ground right there, a ground post to ground your turntables. Below that, we have our spit if for left and right digital input and an ADAT output. Next, we have our MIDI section, four MIDI outs, two MIDI ins. Now, next to that, we have our USB inputs. So you put your USB cable right there and you're good to go. Now, above this whole section, we have our stereo out. We can turn our stereo out to our monitors. And we also have assignable mix outputs that are one through eight. You can send several tracks out through separate outputs. And of course, we have our power on button. And also, we want to plug our power in right there. Now, here on the front of our MPC 5000, we have a section for our disk drive, which is actually a section for our DVD drive. We can store data, we can burn files, we can do everything we can to back up our files on our MPC 5000 and load them in as well. Now across from there, we have our compact flash drive. Very simple. Just push it in, store your data or load it up or take it out. Next to that, we have a foot switch section. We have two places to place a foot switch. You can have two foot switches on here and you can set them up and program the way you want to use them within the system. And last but not least, you got to have a headphone jack, and there's one right there, our NBC 5000. So for our specs, we've got polyphony at 32 voices. The sampler is 16-bit, 44.1 kilohertz in stereo as always. Analog, balanced inputs and outputs. That's important. No noise on the outputs and inputs. That's different. Dynamic filtering, dynamic resonant, low pass filter. We got memory of 16 megabytes. You can install up to 128 megabyte max. Now sounds, a maximum of 256 samples inside the machine. The pads, you get 16 pads. Typical MPC pads, just great pads, as always. We can do 20 songs, 250 steps each song, 24 active programs, we can do 99 sequences and have 46 tracks per sequence and a capacity of 100,000 notes.